Yo, YouTubers, what's going on? What's going on? Um, man, this is my first official tutorial video, you know, and it's, it's going to be an awesome tutorial. I think so. This is one of my favorite concepts. And like I said, we're not just going to talk about the information. We're actually going to apply, um, or not apply, but have some practical use case scenarios of the information that we talk about, which is the most important thing, right? So you can draw your inferences and make your own opinions as far as like the technology that we're using, right? So without further ado, what we're talking about in this tutorial is Docker, right? So not all things Docker, just kind of like simple use cases of Docker. And Docker is, I would say it's essential uh, knowledge for a developer. Well, I would say, I wouldn't say like completely essential, but for a backend dev developer, you do want to know sort of Docker to a, to a good extent, right? Uh, but we're, in this video, we're not necessarily focused on all things Docker, just some simple use cases of it, right? And like I said, I'm a man of my word. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about what Docker is, uh, you know, at a high level, but we're actually gonna have some practical use cases of using Docker. So this is gonna be a two part video, right? So uh, kind of like uh, without further ado, let's just um, hop into talking about Docker, right? So um, if I look at this, um, and sort of explain Docker in my words, my own words, Docker is a very nice way, or it's a set of tools um, that provides a very nice way to run isolated instances of an application, right? And uh, that is very beneficial uh, because of this line, right? So what it's saying is a Docker container image is a lightweight standalone executable package of software that includes, and this part, this is a very important part to note, everything needed to run an application code, runtime, system tools, system libraries, and settings. So what I would kind of add here is it includes, it should include everything and nothing more needed, right? And that's the beauty of Docker. You just provide uh, exactly what you need to run the application into the container, and you can run an isolated instance of that application, right? And you can run it on your host, right? Via the, there's, a, there's some tools that Docker provides for you to run containers on your host machine, right? So um, a lot of people talk about like Docker containers versus VMs. This uh, Stack Overflow post, I think, uh, well, it gives me the best sort of breakdown of what VMs are versus what uh, containers are, right? Uh, I like these bolded words here that containers support OS virtualization and VM supports hardware virtualization, right? So the VM runs on something called a hypervisor, which is software that virtualizes the underlying hardware of the machine. And um, the uh, the containers actually just run on the virtualiz virtualized instance of the host OS, right? Okay, so um, that's kind of like, in a nutshell, what uh, Docker is. Or, yeah, I guess in a nutshell, in terms of what uh, we're going to be using, the purposes of what we're going to be using it for. Um, so, if if you didn't get anything of what I just said, basically think about Docker as a nice way to share uh, repeatable, deterministic instances of running an application, right? So, what that means is, um, say, uh, Joe Schmo over here is running, uh, has a Windows machine, um, and they're running a version of Golang, let's say 1.13. And me over here, I'm running a Mac OS, and I'm running, and I have the binaries downloaded for Go 1.14, right? So we want to run the same application. Now, the thing is, it might work, you know, out the box, but 
you can't necessarily guarantee that, right? Because we're running on different versions of Golang. But Docker provides a way to for the developer not to care about, oh, you know, the versions on the host host machine, but you are putting the necessary version of the runtime and everything else that you need to run the application, right? In a deterministic, repeatable fashion. Cool. So what we're going to do here is we're going to write a simple Golang web server that just responds with hello world. And we're going to build a Docker container or a Docker image from that and run that image in a Docker container. All right. So uh, I have uh, this directory here. And what I'm going to do is, oops, I just enlarged the, the font here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make a directory called sample web server. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> change directories into this sample web server. And um, what I'm going to run here is go mod init, which just basically initializes go modules uh, for my uh, application, right? So what this generated is a go mod file for me, right? And um, what I want to do is I'm going to be actually using this framework called, um, it's called, it's called Fiber, right? So it's a, a nice, uh, Golang framework to build web servers, basically. And they're they modeled after Express, Node Expre uh, Express in, in Node, right? So um, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to just use this piece of code here, right? We're just going to straight copy this piece of code. Uh, I, I would write it, but I guess for time purposes, we're just going to copy this, right? So let's just uh, initialize um a main.go right so the main.go file right so this is where the entry point for our code here so if we do this and we just insert and paste this code in here what is happening here is we um essentially have we'll let's save it here but uh essentially it is pulling this package um and we're initializing a new instance of an app here and then just have a simple get route uh, that's gonna send hello world uh, to the page, to the page when we hit this route here, right, on the browser. So, and it's running on this port right here, uh, 3000. Actually, what I wanna do is I wanna change this port. So I wanna do uh, 8080 instead, right? Uh, so it's gonna listen on 8080. All right. So um, one, th one other thing I forgot to sort of mention is if you didn't download uh, Fiber, you should do it before you do all this. Right. All right. So um, what we're going to do is we're just going to see it running. So if we do go run main.go, um, or you know what, actually, what happens is it's just building before it does that. So now we uh, hit allow here. And if we go to 8080, we should see hello world on the browser, which is nice, right? So we have a nice locally running, uh, simple instance of a web server running from our host and we're able to see hello world here, all right? So that's cool. Now let's look at, okay, we see this and we see it running nicely and pretty clean, right? How can we dockerize this, right? So uh, what we need to do is build something called a Docker file. And uh, basically, you do, there, there, there is like, you know, a lot of syntax that is required here, but um, you don't need necessarily to sort of focus on the syntax because you can do it after the video, but we're just going to show how to have a nice sort of Docker file so we can package our code and build an instance of uh, or build an image based on our application code, right? So this is just basically saying what um, we're basically pulling an image from the Docker Hub here, which has like the necessary sort of binaries and everything to run Golang, right? And what we're gonna do here is we're going to set this environment variable here 
which uh, basically triggers go modules for us. And then we're going to set the work there to have, right? And that's where we're gonna run the code. So when we set the work there here, what we want to do is we wanna copy every single sort of file from this current directory into the Docker image, right? And then what we wanna do is we want to uh, run, um, we're basically gonna build the binary, right? So how to do that is you don't need to necessarily know everything that's going on here, but we're gonna set a couple of environment and variables this is gonna be Linux, and then we have the Go Arc, which is AMD64, and then we're gonna run Go Build, right? And then we're gonna expose the port, which is 8080, okay? And then we're just gonna set the entry point for this, and an entry point is going to be app slash um, sample web server all right so what's going on here is basically um building the binary for my uh application and then i'm exposing the port so um we can uh what we're going to do is we're going to port forward that port so we can hit that hit hit it from our local but uh that's what you got to do when you're working with web servers right so uh, this is a very simple nice Golang Docker file for us to run um, our application in the container. Okay, so we're just gonna save this here and it has a nice build command. We're gonna say docker build dash t, which basically is what we're gonna tag it as, right? And let's just tag this as web server. So we're gonna build uh, this uh, image and we're gonna run it. Okay, so let's build this, oops. Right, so I need to specify the path of the Docker file. So if I push, just put a period, then it knows that the Docker file is in the current working directory. So if I do this, then you can see all the build steps here. Then uh, it's, it's basically pretty verbose in saying what's actually going on in the process, right? So um, this is the build, it's building and it should be done any minute now. Nice, so we it tagged this image web server latest, right? So um, that's pretty cool. So if we type in Docker images, what we're gonna see is we're gonna see web server here, right? Web server and we see the image ID created 13 seconds ago. Nice, okay. So uh, now how do we run this image in the container? So Docker provides a nice command for that. You have Docker run, and then you have to uh, specify some command line or CLI uh, flags here. So um, what I usually do is I like to run my containers in the background, you know, so it's not taking up space on my terminal, um, or I don't have to leave it hanging on my terminal. So I'm just, this command basically says run this container in detached mode, and then, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna specify sort of the port. Uh, I want this to port forward uh, to my to my local machine, a, a port to my local machine, on a port to my local machine, right? So we expose 8080 in the container and we want to forward to a port that we get hit on our host machine, right? So let's just say I want to forward to port 5000 and it's coming from 8080 in the container. And then we want to we want to run this the name of the image right in this container which is web server okay so when we run this then basically this spits out uh the container id right and then what we could do is we can run docker ps to see that this is actually running okay so uh well what if everything worked what we should be able to do is hit uh localhost 5000 and see hello world right so let's do that 5000 and we see hello world all right that is pretty awesome that is really awesome actually so um the cool thing about this is uh if you know you're let's say you're a qa engineer or something right and you don't necessarily 
know too much about Golang development, right? But you you don't really care about Golang development. You are, you're just testing my thing in a black box, right? You're trying to just put in some inputs and see if it spits out the correct outputs, right? A cool thing to give to your QA engineer is a way that you can run your application in Docker, right? Because all he needs to do is, he doesn't need to download the Go binaries on his host machine. All he needs to do is Docker build, and Docker run, right? Which now he can hit the 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 uh, the, ac the application if it's port forwarded, right? And that is the beauty of Docker, right? You don't necessarily care about the run times and everything that goes in the um, the container, right? But you know that okay um, from whatever documentation I read. If I were to run this, it should be, it should work, right? If I were to run this image on, in a container, then it should do what it needs to do. And that is the beauty of Docker, all right? So in the next video, I'm gonna uh, basically talk about another use case of Docker. And uh, we're gonna see it in a, in, a, in, a, in a higher sense, right? We're gonna see it um, running it, running a, a database, uh, a database server in a Docker container and hitting it from a, a client that you, like any client, right? You can hit it from a Go client, you can hit it from a Node client, a Python client. One thing I want you y'all to know is this ch channel is language agnostic. We don't necessarily care about all uh, the language, the features of the language. You know, what we worry about, what we're worrying about is the high level topic and the language is just a tool to get us there, right? So thank you for listening, and uh, I hope to see you in my next video. We are going to be talking about, uh, once again, Docker again, and I hope you y'all um, just put some comments so I can know exactly what to teach, and we can go from there. So I thank you. Uh, hit subscribe, hit like, and share this content, and uh, I hope you come back next time. See you.